Welcome to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast, the premier provider of leadership consulting, culture shaping, and senior level executive search services. Every day, we're privileged to talk with fascinating people who are shaping the future through their leadership and vision. Each episode, you'll hear a different perspective from thought leaders and innovators. Thanks for listening to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast. Hello, my name is Roman Wecker, a principal in the Hydrogen Struggles Frankfurt office and a member of the Global Industrial Practice. In today's podcast, I'm speaking to Rainer Hunsdörfer, CEO of Heidelberger Druckmaschinen, a global printing company, about China. Rainer has been the CEO at Heidelberg since November 2016. Throughout his career, he managed a number of leading industrial technology companies, including Scheffler and Trumpf. Rainer, welcome and thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. To give a bit of context, could you please tell us why China is important for Heidelberg and for your industry in general? China is important to Heidelberg in two major aspects. One, as a market, and second, as one of the best countries for manufacturing. It is the fastest growing market in the world. The population is growing, but even more so, the wealth is growing. And then, of course, China is a strong manufacturing nation with lots of exports, and export also requires packaging. And packaging mm -hmm. is the growth market for Heidelberg. At the same time, uh, Heidelberg has significant plant in China nearby Shanghai, and it is a very competitive place to manufacture machines. Heidelberg has been established there with manufacturing about 10 years ago and uh, has reached a quality level that we produce certain product lines in this plant for the world. This is a significant contribution to Heidelberg's competitiveness in the world, significantly lower manufacturing cost at the same quality level as we can achieve in Germany. Great. And uh, talking about the way you do business, how does China differ from the other BRIC countries? If you compare China to the other BRIC countries, What is most noticeable is the speed of growth, the speed of development, the openness, and the business sense of the Chinese people. If you look, for instance, at the digital business in, in, in China, it is ahead of Europe, it's ahead of all the BRIC countries, it's even ahead, in my point of view, uh, from um, the United States of America. So we have adopted... Chinese systems, so our own e-commerce platform is not a Western platform anymore. Mm. We use WeChat platform to um, achieve that business because there's no way with a Western solution to do any sustainable business. What is, of course, also different is that it's very difficult and very competitive. In some areas, we have not an USP. So it is not difficult for Heidelberg to sell the machines. Uh, our machines have the highest, by far the highest standard, and there is actually no really competitor in this world and also not in China. But when it comes to our life cycle business, to our consumables, to plates, printing plates, to ink, to uh, coatings, of course, there are a lot of manufacturers also in China And you will always find somebody in China who does it for less. Chinese people are very active business people. And of course, also not always very straight. There is a lot of, as we say, under table business. And it's quite difficult to compete here if you not have really a strong USP. That's why we started to start an e-commerce business for the life cycle, where we offer the same convenience as Chinese people have in their daily life with WeChat, mm -hmm. with easy pay, with very simple uh, processes. And that's how we started our digital transformation mm -hmm. in China, different from the rest of the world. Quite along the, um, the philosophy, you know, do in Rome, what Romans do, do in China, what Chinese do. That sounds great. And you touched upon the digital um, progress already. So in the current context of technological progress, in your opinion, what will China's digital transformation journey be compared to the ones of the Western countries? As I mentioned already before, China is in many areas already ahead of Europe, ahead of the Western world. 
when it comes to B2C, it's definitely the case. You know, there is uh, no cash in the real practical life available anymore. So even at the food market, they pay with WeChat, you find a QR code everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very convenient, very easy to handle, and it's, it's better than you have the cash in your wallet. But also in other areas, very much supported also by the government, like AI, China is probably quite ahead of us. And that is not the only area. If I look, you know, in many other areas, China has left already the state of copying. Mm. They are on their own. They're developing their own technologies and they're well underway. So they're becoming more and more a competitor on the one hand, but at the same time, also even a bigger and more important market. So my personal opinion is we shouldn't be afraid of China that they become too strong because at the same time they're growing techn technologically, they will grow the wealth and that will create markets for us, for Europeans. We should be more afraid if they struggle and if China becomes weak because then mm. at least Heidelberg and most German machinery companies will have a big issue and that's the real risk. So we should hope that they stay strong and move ahead. You talked about the importance of technology and, and of the technological progress, how impressive that is in China. Still, I assume also in China, um, people are the most important factor, probably even more important uh, than Absolutely. the technology. So in your opinion, uh, what are the three most important factors for attracting and keeping the best talent in China? If you want to get the best talent in China, it's very helpful to have a brand which is known. So we as Heidelberg, even in China, a well-known, famous brand and people love to work for us. The second, of course, is that you have a leadership because the relation in China is more to your boss than to the company. So if you want to attract good people, you need to have a good reputation for a good leadership and Chinese people will honor that. And the third is, of course, that you need to offer Chinese people in particular when they're young, career opportunities. You need to promote them basically each year, step by step. So typically we need to have more uh, ranks than in the Western world, where it is probably enough to promote somebody once all four years or so in the Western world. Um, this frequency must be much higher in, 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 in China. And of course, it goes along always with a fair pay. Fair pay is very important because they compare. And if you don't pay fair, they will leave you, even if you're good in leadership and brand. Mm -hmm. So now, if talking about the people and, uh, and your leadership team there, what would you consider also, compared to the Western countries, the most effective leadership and uh, communication skills in China? What is completely different to the Western countries is the leadership is very personal. You're not only the boss of your employee, you are also responsible for the wealth of his family. So if his or her mother is sick, you need to care about, you need to make sure that the person can get to their family. It is very personal and, you, and the better you build this relation, the more motivated employees you will have. And of course, It's very helpful if you speak Chinese. So at Heidelberg, we have almost no expats in China, very few. The majority of our uh, managers are native Chinese people. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a, a last uh, facet I would like to be, uh, I'm, I'm interested to get your uh, feedback. If you look into the skill set of, of the leaders in China, Is there anything you would, if you compare it again to the Western leaders, is there anything um, you see as a strong commonality or as a strong difference regarding, for example, strategic skills, conceptual thinking, uh, creativity, or maybe um, uh, innovation power? I think those skills are very similar because the education Chinese leaders have today are based on the same basis than, than in the Western world. So it has come very close. On the other hand, one thing I've always noticed is that Chinese people are very creative. Mm -hmm. 
mm. in particular when it comes to workarounds. So <laughs> they're very flexible. And sometimes the challenge is to keep them close to the process and by the rules. Many things will be resolved on a very personal level. So, for instance, one example, if you have a quality issue with your customer, they try to solve it, so to speak, under the radar. So they don't have to report it. So their quality numbers are probably better than their reality. That doesn't mean that they let down the customer or kind of um, do workarounds with not pleasing the customer. They please the customer, but on a very individual basis, and the customer understands, and nobody in the headquarter will ever learn about it. <laughs> That's one example. That's mm -hmm. the flexibility uh, they have to adapt to the situation and make themselves look good. So, Rainer, thank you very much for those great insights into China. And, and maybe as a, as a closing question, um, not only for China, but maybe um, for the management in general, if you were to give one piece of advice to future leaders about what they most need to do to thrive today, what, what would that be? Be open-minded, leave the track you're running on and look not only a little bit left and right, look much further left and right because the world is changing quickly and if you, if you stay in the track you're on, you will be not successful. Rainer, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thanks for listening to the Hydrogen Struggles Leadership Podcast. To make sure you don't miss more future shaping ideas and conversations, please subscribe to our channel on the podcast app. And if you're listening via LinkedIn, Twitter or YouTube, why not share this with your connections? Until next time.